All right, hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is The Coding Zoo. So at The Coding Zoo, our goal is to help others learn how to program like yourself. So if this is your first time joining and you enjoy these videos, be sure to click subscribe, click the like button, help us get, that helps us get the word out to others. In today's video, we're gonna start covering data structures. The first data structure we're gonna cover is an array. So if you've never used an array before, if you're new to computer programming and you need data structures, the first one you want to start learning about is an array. So we're going to cover array. We're going to let you know what an array is and how to use it. So if that interests you, stick around. We're going to jump right in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, what is an array? So in computer science, an array is basically just a collection of data values. So for example, if I create a variable, if I create an int variable, and an uh, integer variable, it stores a number. I have one variable, it stores one number. Well, how would I store multiple numbers, right? How would I store multiple values in one variable? Well, that's where you would use an array. Let me show you real quick. So if you look at my desktop here, I've prepared a, a few examples. I'm gonna go over these examples one by one. So if you look at this first example, I basically have declared a number variable. So in my number variable here, I have the integer three. So this is basically me creating a single variable and storing one value, right? I'm storing the integer three in the variable called number. All right, so what happens when I create this variable? What are you doing? Well, you're basically telling the program to store this value in memory, right? So picture it is creating a slot in memory and storing your value there, okay? You're allocating memory and you're putting a single value in that memory. So what happens when I want to store more than one value in a single variable? Well, that you can do that by creating an array. All right, so let's take a look at how I would create an array. Let me uncomment this code. So here is one way you can declare an array. So what am I doing here? So first I'm declaring what kind of array is it? It's an integer array. So I have integer and I have open bracket and close bracket. Then I declare my variable name. I'm calling this, this array, my array. And I've got equals and then I have open squiggly bracket. Can't hardly say that squiggly, open squiggly bracket. And next I'm saying, what is in my array? In this array, I'm going to store 0, 2, 3, and 4. And then I'm going to close it with another bracket. And then I'm going to have my semicolon. So I went from having a, a single variable that contained a single value to a single variable that contains multiple values. So my array is allowing me to store multiple values. Now, one thing you should know about an array is when you define an array, it has a exact number of elements it can have. So it doesn't grow. Once you declare an array, it can only have that many elements. So in this declaration, I have zero, two, three, four. I'm putting four elements in there. So when I declare this array, it no, it's, its size is going to be four and it will never grow any bigger than that. You can't have more than the original size. This is the original size. So the size is not dynamic. It stays at what you first set it at. So as I declare my array, I may give it a size or I may specify the elements that I want in the array and it's gonna give it, make it have a certain size. Now, when I do that, Java is going to, or most programs are going to create that array in memory. And they're they going to allocate just enough blocks, just enough consecutive blocks in memory to have the store of those values, right? So if my array size is five, it's going to open up five consecutive blocks of memory to store your value. And that's a five consecutive blocks. It cannot grow, right? The downside of an array is, is it can't automatically grow. Here, let me show you some more ways of creating an array. Let's look at this example here. So in this example, I'm doing int, open bracket, close bracket, my array primitives, and I'm passing in one, two, three, four, five values. What's different about this array? Well, with this array, I just wanted to show you, I can create an array of primitives. This is a primitive integer. So in our upcoming videos, I'm gonna go over uh, different data structures. One will be a list. Now a list, cannot keep primitive data types, right? I just wanted to point that out. An array can have wrapper objects or it can have primitive data types. This is one example of an array that stores primitive integers. Now, what is another way of me creating an array? Let's go over that. So in my next example, I'm gonna show you how to create an array without giving it the value type up front. So I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna comment these items out here. And I'm going to declare my array here. All right, so let's look at this piece of code. What am I doing here? 
So first, let's start with my declaration of my array. So up here, we declared an array by saying integer, open bracket, in bracket, my array, and then we gave the values we want in the array. And that array is going to be created with a size of four. Down here, I'm not giving it the values at first. I'm just saying create me an array with a size of four. So basically, I'm doing integer, open bracket, in bracket, my array equals new integer, open bracket, the size of the array I want it. What's the size I want? And then in bracket, semicolon. So that's another way of declaring arrays. You can basically declare what size you want up front, and then you can put values in later. Now, how do you put values in later? Well, you do that by specifying an index. So an index is just at what point in the array do you want to put a value? An array is, is a zero-based index. So if I wanted to access the first element in the array, I would use the index of zero. So what do I mean by index? Well, this is how you do it. So I'm going to have an index. I'm going to start with zero. I'm going to go ahead and put that index in this variable called current free index, right? Now, I don't have to do this. I could just use zero right here. So I could say, all right, for my array, the first slot, and notice I have open bracket, the index, close bracket. I want to put the number one. So I could do it this way. So my array index zero, put the value one. That's one way of doing it. For this example, I'm going to use a variable to keep track of my index. All right. So first, my index is zero. So I'm saying in my array, put at index zero, the value one. Now this plus plus here, and I don't want to go too deep into Java, but this plus plus is saying basically after I get my value out of this variable, add one to it. So by the time you get to this line here, I'm saying my array index one, set the value to four. And then next I'm saying, and I'm adding a number to this variable after that. And then in this line, I'm basically saying my array index two, put it the variable eight. So zero, one, so zero, one, and two indexes, put one, four, and eight. It's basically what I'm doing with this piece of code. So this would be the same as me saying basically zero, one, and two. Right. This is how you could set those values without using a variable to keep track of the index. I like to use a variable to keep track of the index. Hopefully that's not confusing you. So the basic thing to note is if I want to put values in the array, I use an index and it would be the array name, open bracket, the index, close bracket, and it equals whatever value you want to put in. Right. That, that's pretty simple. Don't get, don't get caught up on my, uh, my, on my free current free index variable too much. Hopefully that's not confusing you, but here, let me, I'm going to put it back. All right. So I'm basically in zero one slot, zero slot one slot two. I'm putting these variables. Let's print it out. So I've got a little helper method here I've created ahead of time that kind of just goes through the array and prints it out, right? So you'll see here I have this helper method. It prints out some text for me and it's going to, I'm going to loop through this array. Now I'm going to loop through this array and I'm going to print it out. I'm going to print out what's in the array. Now I'll go through how you do this in, in the next example, next few samples. All right, let's run it. All right, so there we go. So what is in my array? So index zero, I have one. Index one, I have four. Index two, I have eight. And since I made this array to be a length of four, my my fourth, my third index, which is zero, one, two, three, four. So my fourth index, which is index three, is null. So when I create this array, I create it to the set size and it's going to stay that size. All right, pretty simple. Let's move on. Now, how do I get something out of my array, right? What's one way of getting something out of my array? All right, so in this example, I'm showing how do you get something out of your array? So we saw you use an index to put something in your array. Well, how do you get something out? Well, same thing, you use an index. So on this line here, I'm actually saying to print out whatever is in my array index of two. So remember it's zero base, zero, one, two. So that will be the third item in my array, which should be an eight. Let's run it and see. So here's where I printed out the array above in the previous example. Here's where I'm, here's where I'm printing out index two, zero, one, two. And that happens to be eight, right? So I'm printing out eight. So I'm using an index to get data out of my array. You use an index to get data, to put data in your array. You use an index to get data out of your array. Just want you to take note. If you know where the value is at in your array, you don't have to search the array. You don't have to traverse through the array like I did with that loop a second ago. If you know where it's at, you can just give the index value and you can get the value out. That is called constant time. How fast you do that is called constant time. It's big O of one. I won't go into the details of big O, but if you're familiar with big O, this is constant time. If you know what index the value is at, it's constant time. That is O of one. 
All right, let's move to the next one. All right, now what if I wanted to search the array for a value, right? How would I do that? How would I search the array of value? I wanna, I wanna print something out, or at least wanna find out if the value exists in there. How do I do that? Well, you would loop through the array. You'd go one by one through the array, looking for the value you're, you're searching for, basically, right? You'd loop through the array. Now you'd do that big O of N, linear time. That's linear time. So let's search. I'm going to search for the value of eight. So I'm going to create a for loop here. Now I'm just going to start with the index of zero. So four, I've got open parenthesis, int, index equals zero. I'm going to start with the index of zero. Now once you, and then I've got semicolon, index, I want to keep going as long as index is less than my array dot length. So you'll notice there's no open and close bracket next to length. This is a property. This is not a, a function on the my array object, right? It's a, it's a property. So if you need to know the size of your array, if you didn't already know that it was a size of four, you would use your variable name dot length. So I'm saying, okay, I'm going to start with the index of zero. I'm declaring that index right here, int index of zero. Keep going until index, as long as index is less than my array length. And then each time you loop, increase index by one, index plus plus. In index equals index plus one. It's basically what you're saying there. So loop through there. In this loop, I'm saying if my array, and we're going to start out with index zero, zero is not equal to null, and my array index zero is equal to eight, print out found, not two, but found eight, and then it is at index, and then the index number. So I'm going to loop through, going through each index until I find eight. And when I find eight, I'm going to print it out. Let's see how that works. So here is this example right here. So I'm searching for eight and it looped through the and it looped through the array until it found eight. It says I found eight. It is at index two. So it kept looping until it found eight. And as you can see in the previous example, eight is at index two. So we were able to search through the array. We were able to loop through the array. It's linear time, big O of N. I was able to loop through the array, search for something, and I found it and I printed out the index number where it exists. Just wanted you to understand how do you loop through the, how do you search an array? You, you basically loop through the array one index at a time and you look for something. That's how you search through an array, right? Linear time. So what's another way I can loop through my array? I loop through my array using this type of for loop. Is there a different way of for loop I could do? Sure. I could do for integer value my array and then do sys out. Let's do that value. So I could loop through my array this way. I don't have to use the index. I can use this type of for loop. For each value in my array, print out that value, right? Let's run that real quick. So this was my previous example. Here is where I'm looping through with that last for loop. For each value in my array, print out that value. Here's where I'm looping through for that. You can traverse your array. You can search for something in your array. You can print everything out in your array. If you don't know where the index, if you do know what the index is, you can grab it real quick, oh, one time, constant time. If you don't know where it's at, you don't, or you want, or you're searching for something in your array, or you just want to print out your array, you can loop through it. That is linear time, big O of N. All right, next let's talk, let's take a look at inserting more data in the array. So I've already put three values in my array. I can put one more value because my array is size of four. Now, how would I do that? You've already seen this above. I just use the index to do that, right? So I've already got an index variable. I've been keeping track of what index is free with my index variable. I know that this variable represents what index is free because I've been adding one to it and using it to store values, right? That's why I created that variable. Keep track of what index is next. If I didn't know what index is next and what index is free, I'd have to loop through that array and find the empty slot. But because I've been keeping track with this variable, what index is free, I know which slot is empty. Zero, one, and two have something in it. Slot number three doesn't. In this case, I don't need this plus plus. Current free index is already set to three. I'm gonna set that variable to nine. Now, because I know what index is free, this is big O of one. This is constant time to do that. If I didn't know what slot is free, I'd have to loop through it, find the empty slot, and then set that slot. That would be O in linear time. Let's run this. I knew what index was free, and I put my nine in there, and I was able to print it out. So I have zero index of one, one index is four, two index is eight, and the third index is nine. If you know what index is free, you can put something in there fast. O one, constant time. If you don't, you have to search. O in linear time. 
One last thing. What happens if you want my array to store more than four elements? What do you have to do? Well, you have to create another array, take your elements out of your my array, and store them into your new array. And that second array you create, you create it with more slots. So you have to manage that yourself. And that's that's tedious and, and time consuming. All right. So as the elements grow and how much you need to store, you have to keep creating new arrays. So one of the downsides of using fixed arrays, the downside is you have to do that managing of creating new arrays and copying stuff over manually. Something like an array list, a dynamic array, which is sometimes called an array list, will do that for you. We'll go over that in one of our next videos. All right. So uh, that's it for today. I hope this was somewhat helpful. I know it can be a little bit confusing. So again, one last time, if you have any questions, feel free. Just leave me a message below. I will get back to you. If you have any messages about arrays, any questions about arrays, get, I will get back to you. My, my goal is to help others learn. So uh, leave me a question below. I'll get back to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. Again, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe and click that like button. It helps us get this instructional video out to others. It helps us grow. We really appreciate it. Have a great week.